would you please welcome on stage the fabulous cast of Abnormally Funny People. First up, please share your breakfast and give it up for Liz Carr. Liz's lifelong ambition is to appear on David Letterman. And now, Tanya Lee Davis, who has been on David Letterman, and off David Letterman, and often on and off David Letterman, your little form. Here he comes, Simon the Minx Minty. The exultant result of several drunken nights of passion between Tanya Lee and David Letterman, the little four. Talking of passion, please embrace the mercurial charisma of Mr. Steve Day, who is still trying to think up a joke about David Letterman. Hell may freeze over first. Oh no, it's Steve Best, David Letterman's personal gynecologist and part-time masseurs. Look at him go. And finally, the one and only Chris McCausland. Who once wrote David a letter, man? You will notice on Abnormally Funny People we have an unusual lineup. We have a token non disabled person. He won a competition to be here tonight, so bear with him and wish him all the best as he tackles various completely undemanding technical tasks. Hello, hello, uh, I'm Steve Day. Uh, I'm Britain's only deaf comedian. If there aren't any others, I haven't heard. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be in this show. It's so much. Everybody in this show is brilliant. And we've got Catherine. Catherine's here tonight, our interpreter. I work with interpreters. I'm like, oh, but I was doing a gig in Norwich. Oh, and it wasn't going well. It just wasn't going well. And I thought, come on now, it's not working. Stop the jokes. Just start speaking to them. And I did. I just started speaking. And at that point, the people looking at the interpreter started really laughing. Really, really laughing. I thought, I'm doing all right now. I'm not really saying any jokes. But I looked across at the interpreter. And she was doing her own material. <laughs> and in fact, I was glad to leave London. Oh, it was so embarrassing. My last week at home, I got into a fight with my bank manager. A fight with the manager of the Lloyds TSB. And it was all over a misunderstanding. Apparently, what he was actually saying was, your account. <laughs> I went deaf when I was 18. I didn't want to be a deaf person. I didn't want to be who I was. I was too embarrassed. And in fact, in my teens and 20s, I would rather that people would think I was stupid rather than deaf. I really would. That people thought I was stupid rather than deaf. But with good reason. Good reason. See, if you're stupid, your chances of success with the opposite sex are much greater than if you're deaf. <laughs> they are much greater. And I'll prove it to you now, with your help, by asking you a question, right? So be honest, to everybody in the room, how many of you have ever had sex with someone who was deaf? <laughs> Second question. <laughs> I do get some very strange questions. People say to me, so, so were you born like that? <laughs> Can, oh, no, I was that big. <laughs> My mum said giving birth was like pooing a peanut. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest bane of my life, though, the biggest nightmare is those fantasy films. It's the Harry Potters, it's the Lord of the Rings, it's the, the Snow Whites. I think people think I live in the woods. <laughs> I think they think I'm a wizard. <laughs> I've even had people touch me thinking I'm a leprechaun. <laughs> and that's where their luck runs out. <laughs> She's a bit of a babe. I would. I mean, I would, but someone told me she's fucking grumpy. I'm allowed one. We have uh, small persons conventions. These are fantastic. We, you, the last one I went to a few years ago was in Denver. 
This is 1,500 people like me, and we descend on the city for a week, just take over. Everywhere in the bars and the cafes and the restaurants, you'll see people like me. Um, now, it was a few weeks after the convention. I was in Vegas, and I met this woman, and she came over and said, can I ask you a question? That's normally a small person question. Uh, I said, yeah, and she said, I've recently been to Denver, and can you tell me why all short people live there? <laughs> No, she thought, she thought it's our mecca. She, she thinks, we, like, we, like, we reach the age of 18 and say, well, thanks a lot, Mum and Dad, you've done a really great job, but now I must be with my people. Because <laughs> you're sitting there and you're thinking, what the fuck's wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> correct actually to ask a disabled person what's wrong with them but you're right it is fucking funny <laughs> you see what it is is disability is very fashionable now I mean you could say disability is the new black <laughs> really and everyone's cashing in there's now a new London restaurant that gives diners the experience of what it's like to be blind honest to God they're all over Europe and one's just opened in London so they're totally pitch black and you're served by a blind waiter, and your food is cooked by blind chefs. <laughs> well, exactly. It's called Don Lenoir in the dark. Well, if you've got a blind waiter approaching you with a hot bowl of soup, let's call it the Burns Unit. Because <laughs> that's where you're going to be. There'll be food everywhere. You'll have forks in your eyes. People will be reaching out for your bread rolls. Get your hands off my ciabattas, you bastards. <laughs> It's a fun show. It's a joke. Spang my belly. I'm a bit nervous as well because my, bro my brother's in. It's my brother. I've got a brother. I've got a brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I've got a brother. I've got a brother. He's much older than me. He's my father. No, he's not. He's a, <laughs> we're a fun bunch. I'm done joke. My brother, uh, my brother, when he was younger, he's dead now. No, he's not. I'm my brother. Uh, yeah. You know, I haven't. Is that? Uh, is the film in? It's not in. Um, my brother, when he was younger, he was, he was very much into girly mags. He loved, he loved girly mags. Mags, mags. He loved mags. He loved girly mags. He used to hide them underneath his bed. And I used to find them because I used to sleep uh, in the lower bunk. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. Oh, I had a very strange beginning. Uh, my stepmother gave birth to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit weird, Daddy. It's a bit weird. My, my, she's a transvestite. My mum. She's a transvestite. She's like a father to me. She's my father. <laughs> she's my brother. She's a donkey. She's French. She's not French. I'm godmother. Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, oh, strawberry. It's not. It's my microphone. Um, it's gone a bit weird. No, it hasn't. My mum. She was actually told she couldn't have children, so I was born as an adult. <laughs> this next act, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very funny. Bring us together, Ms. Tanya Lee Davis. start losing the weight because you're jacked up on the caffeine and you're gonna burn the calories off and you're gonna lose the weight. But tell dad I'm gonna lose the weight. I can't keep food on the fucking spoon. <laughs> Oh, 